Hey, welcome to the Future of Dentistry event. I'm really excited to be talking to Chris Gibbs, the CEO of Florida Probe Corporation today. Um, Chris really has spent so much of his 25 years, the majority of his life, working for Florida Probe, and he's so passionate about periodontal disease and the best ways to help patients understand and early intervention, all the things that I really am passionate about too. So Chris, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. It's fun to be here and join you again. Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to talking to you more. So, okay, I'm going to have you give just a brief background of, you know, brief history, your background of Florida Pro, 25 years, you know, how it came to be and, and what you guys do. Yeah, so um, I'm the CEO of Florida Probe now, and Florida Probe's been around for a while, so 30 years. Um, Florida Probe got its start really from the University of Florida. There was kind of a request uh, to NIH for a product that would help track periodontal disease regardless of the examiner so that they could get some good research going for fighting gum disease. And so that's kind of how the product started and why the company is called Florida Probe to kind of give credit back to the University of Florida where it started. Um, so 1987 really was when they got FDA approval and uh, kind of separated from the university. Actually, the University of Florida was busy working on a product called Gatorade. Yeah, and a few that's others. hilarious. I was going yeah. to ask about Gatorade. I was going to say you guys were about the same time as Gatorade. No, really, you, you were. You're, that's hilarious. So... Um, Anyways, the university was really busy with some other neat inventions and saw this product as just kind of a research tool and uh, released the ownership um, outside of the university. And so it's been a company really since 1987, and uh, my involvement started a few years later. And so it's been a, a great time to uh, work with Florida Probe and, and watch technology catch up with the dental industry and, and really be a huge change to everything that's happening now. Yeah. Well, I was to say, Chris, what are some of the things that you enjoy most about the work that you do and, you know, at the Florida Pro? So I really kind of like uh, working with offices and figuring out new things that we can add either to the software um, or to the product. So we've got uh, VoiceWorks now, which is kind of a new uh, voice-activated system to add on to everything else that we have. Um, so that's been fun to go to trade shows, talk to dentists, go home, add things to the software, add things to the probe. And so it's just been a great opportunity for me to really kind of get out there and, and make things and, and then see them make improvements for dental offices around the world. And I'm curious, you know, during your time at Florida Probe, have you noticed like a complete change in the oral systemic link and the knowledge around periodontal disease? I'll be honest, I don't, you know, I don't know how long all that information, I know that obviously the last years, the last decade, it's been very prominent. But I'm curious, have you seen that as a big shift and feeling like you're helping helping dentists with something that can be hard to talk to patients about, but also just really helping patients with their health? Um, that's a great question. So Florida Probe, when it first got started, right, we were really new to have a product there that really required a computer in the operatory. Yeah. So as a company, I think one of our first challenges was being able to say the computer that works so great up front to help you track and be more efficient and more effective with your time is now also, you know, should be in the operatory. So a lot of the things uh, that we had to struggle to get offices to improve and change are just kind of commonplace now yeah. <laughs> to have computers in the operatory and have people good at using computers and even having the patient used to trusting information from a computer and, and having that be a valuable part of the learning experience. Yeah, that's so interesting. Okay, well, I really think um, VoiceWorks and Porter Probe are best seen. So please, Chris, like, feel free to take us through and show us a little bit about what VoiceWorks does, what Porter Probe does, so that everyone can kind of see it in action. Yeah, so um, today we're going to spend most of the time talking about this new product, VoiceWorks. We're obviously still talking about Florida Probe and probing and charting. I think the, to tie back into your question from a minute ago, um, you know, we have seen a lot of changes in what the research now tells us about gum disease or periodontal disease and how important it is and how much stronger that link is continuing to be. So I think as we, uh, like if you heard this same talk 10 years from now, I think you're going to see... Um, an interesting change in, um, you know, in how, how much more important this disease is as it relates to saving lives and things in dentistry. 
And uh, what we really thought we had invented was a computerized probe to be more accurate and more consistent, and all of that is wonderful. Mm -hmm. But if the patient never says yes to treatment because they don't understand there's a sense of urgency and importance, then you as a dentist or a dental team member can know as much as you know anybody in the world knows, but everything kind of gets stuck right there. So a lot about what Florida Probe does that's so powerful and effective is about getting patients to say yes and getting patients to say yes earlier in the disease cycle when they have more treatment options and we can really not only save their teeth but really save their their lives. So I wanted to pop up some slides as we're talking and kind of run through some fun stuff. I have yeah, a special absolutely. opportunity of working with offices from all different ends of the spectrum. Sometimes they've uh, kind of the very top end offices, they have every piece of technology you could imagine and then uh, Florida Probe and, and VoiceWorks and other things are kind of the icing to that to that beautiful protocol and that uh, really well-oiled machine. Um, and, and then again, there's offices that really aren't probing or charting or really aren't doing the diagnostic work that they could be or should be, and now they're kind of starting from scratch. And so it's really fun for me to kind of be uh, working with maybe about 200 different offices in the United States and even some outside the U.S. Um, to kind of get them up to the next level and and make a big difference financially in their practice, make a big difference in the quality of documentation, and make a big difference to the the level of dentistry that's, you know, and patient experience. So that's what today is really about for me is kind of creating this wow factor um, around just the perio exam that kind of can be boring and simple <laughs> and talking about how perio and teeth, really, if you're talking about what's happened over the last 10, 20 years, you know, we talk about saving teeth and saving smiles, and perio really is now about saving lives, which is a big difference. And I think yeah. the big thing to understand is that periodontal disease really has no classic motivators or warning signs. So a toothache maybe has the most powerful marketing department behind it, and when it right. hurts, everybody knows they have a problem. Exactly. And so pain, perio, yeah, pain is a very yeah. good marketing tool, but yeah, periodontal disease just doesn't have that. It doesn't have that early on. It doesn't have that for such an extended period of time. But it, that is not part of the marketing tool, yeah, part of the marketing plan for periodontal disease. Yeah, and so if the mouth or the body had a good marketing team, um, maybe gingivitis would be a painful experience and people would, you know, request treatment and, and catch that disease in that earliest stage when it's reversible. I think it's, um, so, you know, obviously toothache or something else has a much stronger obvious effect and a lot of patients correlate dentistry with beauty and and um, that sensitivity or pain issue and know for sure when they have a problem and of course seek treatment. Mm -hmm. What we find uh, that the statistics say is about 50% of every adult patient age 30 or older in your office has active periodontal disease. I'm not talking about gingivitis or you know something, I'm talking about actual bone loss which is pretty scary to know that 50% of the adult patients in your office would benefit from a perio treatment today. It's about 30% moderate, about 8.7% mild, and about 8.5% severe. Yeah. So that's pretty alarming. Yeah. Um, what we found is, is obviously from the statistics that three out of four suffer from some form of periodontal disease and, and typically lose at least one tooth in their mouth before they die at an older age. So obviously this disease as you get older mm -hmm. affects more people. I think the interesting thing about this particular uh, study was that only 3% of people were asking for help related to gum disease. If 100% that had a toothache, you know, w would basically interrupt you in the middle of your other dental appointment uh, parts and ask for help and for perio, it was almost non-existent. So basically 3% uh, without that education, you know, without that training that offices now give. And so almost everybody gets it, but almost nobody has a sense of urgency or importance. Yes. Um, like other diseases, diabetes, unless you're testing your blood or have a family history, you may not know that you have a problem. And so this is similar in that regard. There was a neat article done by uh, Dr. Chris Kamer um, that was talking more about, hey, this disease is connected to death. Um, you're twice as likely to die of a heart attack. You're three times more likely to die from a stroke. You're 62% increased risk of pancreatic cancer. Type 2 diabetic is three times more likely to die. So this is way past that beautiful wow. smile stuff. You know, this stuff is killing people, and these diseases are really serious. And I think, you know, a lot of toe tags should actually say cause of death 
periodontal disease. Now, did they really die of periodontal disease? Well, they died of a heart attack or stroke, according to the medical community. But what caused that, or what you know, added to that inflammation? Mm -hmm. And I think it's really under. I think one thing for dentistry going forward is the importance of dentistry in the health of the mouth will be a much better communication tool and back and forth between the physicians and that the mouth turns out really is connected to the total body health and wellness and uh, it's a wonderful opportunity. They did a neat study, uh, the Jeff Coates study, which they're calling the United Concordia Health Study, was really a really neat study to connect, well, how much money is involved because a lot of people need to see the money to make mm -hmm. a change. Right, to feel like there's a benefit. People, yeah, and especially hospitals, right? I think in the future, uh, big medical companies that are paying for your heart attacks and strokes and spending, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars per person, in some cases per year, for someone that has a heart attack or a stroke or uh, a preterm low weight pregnancy or, or other things, you know, what if that turns out it is related to this inflammation in the mouth and can we do something about it. So they actually put some numbers to it. These are people that are typically at pretty high risk that already have diabetes or already have a history of heart attack and then we didn't clean up the mouth. How much does that cost those companies? So to know that in a single year diabetes, uh, you know, having a healthy mouth, you know, could save $2,840 per year. You know, stroke was 5681 heart disease $1,000, pregnancy related 2433 um, so that was huge, I mean, yeah. financially. So I hope that medical companies uh, and insurance companies start to really understand the value of what we're talking about. And of course, it's tempting to go back into your own practice and look at these high-risk patients and really make sure that they're in that three-month cycle or we're giving them yes. those opportunities to get well, where before some of those people are kind of slipping through the cracks in a six-month profi. And Chris, I'm going to ask you to go back for just one second to that slide because, like you said, it'd be great for the medical community and it'd be great for the insurance companies to start seeing that and, and recognizing the benefit. But we don't want to wait for them to get on board. And I think it's really important that dentists see these statistics and they see the value in it. So, And hygienists, let me say that, probably hygienists even more so, so that they're understanding the value of what they're delivering. You know, it is on so right. many different levels. It's one thing to keep your teeth stable and healthy for as long as possible and hopefully your entire life. It's also another thing to in, improve a patient's health and to look at the fact that you're actually decreasing um, medical expenses. And in a day and age where medical expenses are, it, it's just expensive, right? Like a, a large portion of that does come out of patient's pocket for when it comes to their medical expenses. And so for them to know that it's going to, it, it really does have an impact on their total health, especially if they have, have had any, if they have any of these conditions or trying to prevent any of these conditions, then it's really useful for them or they're at risk, right. say that, if they're at risk of, of some of these conditions, yeah. And, I, and I, you know, tying back into that original thing about what we're seeing over the last 20, 30 years kind of story, I think the power of what the hygienist does, um, you know, if you think of maybe 30, 40 years ago, a big part of their thing was really keeping the mouth clean. Mm -hmm. I think that role is really transitioning to keep the mouth healthy, which is a huge difference. Mm -hmm. If you work really hard and all you do is clean teeth, I think that can wear on you as, you know, what is my purpose and, and what value do I really create? And I think as we do more dentistry below the gum line, especially as the hygienist does it, they have more tools, they have more treatment options, they have more things to really manage this disease for a lifetime. And that's huge if I think I'm saving somebody's life instead of I'm just, you know, cleaning teeth. And mm -hmm. I think that's critical to understand that their value as the second licensed person in the office, um, really their value is going up in, in the requirement of training, the requirement of, you know, understanding to save lives and not just teeth. And really that relationship that they have is so important for a hygienist. I love my dentist. I love my hygienist. Uh, but I spend so much more time with my hygienist. Yes. And if my hygienist left my office, I'd be really nervous because my relationship is with that hygienist. I spend so much time. And so that relationship they have is so powerful. And part of what we want to do with technology is not just make them faster, but make them more effective. We joke about a term called hygienius and that the difference between being a hygienist and being a hygienius is having that genius level education of training, but also the ability to get a patient who doesn't even know they have a life-threatening disease to say yes to a treatment now when we have all the treatment options and all the chance for success instead of later. So there's a lot of hygienists out there working really hard, cleaning a lot of teeth, but mm -hmm. don't always get to the hygienist level. And I think using technology and, and having those relationships are critical. Yeah, um, I couldn't agree more.
Awesome. This is, uh, you know, we're learning more about treating the individual patient instead of looking at medicine overall, and I think 30% of the population are basically genetically susceptible to gum disease. We're finding more and more people, you know, that have diabetes and other issues based on eating habits and other things are then a two-way street. It's not just the one-way street that we thought of. Uh, these people are typically six times more likely to develop periodontal disease, even though they have good oral habits, and so that's important, important to know. I think uh, another thing is that they did a study about periodontal disease and periodontal charting, and they found that offices typically underestimate gum disease by up to 50%. Wow. So when they finally are telling the person, hey, you have a really bad problem, they're typically under-diagnosing it or understating it. And patients who don't, it doesn't hurt, I don't, you don't see anything, there's no urgency again. So I think that's important. Uh, six to 10 millimeter pockets. So at six millimeters, it's already severe. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are waiting, you know, much farther uh, to get more active. Yeah. Um, that early intervention, like you said, if that's just something that needs to be addressed, that, that, you know, you're going to get the best results with that early intervention for, for certain. Yeah. And of course, you know, what we're basically talking about is how do I have a system in place that's really going to increase that treatment acceptance in the early stage and then kind of keep them motivated. I think it's important to understand that the hygienist's job isn't to be the bad cop and to announce all this bad news, that really we're going to let technology do some of that. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to start off really step one is engaging this patient in this co-diagnostic experience. It's not showing up broken, I fix you and send you home. It's really getting that patient on the team. It's you and me against the disease. And then together we're going to figure out how your body responds. And then you can earn your way back to a six month thing or you can yes. you know show us what you can do with a combination of your home care and the treatment you get in this office and so for Florida Probe just doing the regular periodontal exam you're going to do all the time uh, we want that to create this kind of high-tech co-diagnostic thing it needs to be that wow factor it needs to be remarkable a lot of patients like me are a visual learner so there's auditory learners there's emotional learners you know, so I think for some people, you just have to see it. A four sounds just like a three. So when I see it in red and I can see the bone loss and how much my tooth structure is left, I think for some people, they have to see it. And so yeah. part of this is about sending a copy of your own chart home with you. A lot of offices have beautiful charts or beautiful documentation, but it's for them. And of course, when you make it personal, you make it about them, patients are much more likely to kind of get involved um, sending a chart home is this taking ownership part, even if they're not using it to glue to the mirror and, and do uh, oh, brushing yeah. and flossing from, I think a lot of them actually are. Um, you need to simplify this. It needs to kind of be able to be a hands-free thing. You've got both hands in the mouth, so anything that you've got to go back and touch a keyboard in the middle of charting or other things can really take time or take a second person. So part of what VoiceWorks and Florida Probe do is take a two-person team down to one and then make you more effective. And um, there is, the, go ahead. And, and Chris, we can just do it before we, well, actually now might be a good time. I'm curious, um, just because I wasn't completely clear, do you mind just telling the difference between VoiceWorks and Florida Pro, like what, what they do together and what, you know, their similarities and their differences? Sure. So Florida Probe is a computerized handpiece uh, that tracks periodontal disease. It also tracks things like recession, um, positive or negative from the CEJ. So this is a constant force probe. No matter how hard you poke the patient, it adjusts and takes over. So where that's critical is that you have two hygienists and um, one of them um, probes really hard and maybe gets a five uh, or a six and one of them probes really light you know, and maybe gets a three or a four. So the difference is that in an office where a lot of people are probing, it allows you to help standardize you know, multiple pressures. The other thing is this probe reads to the nearest two-tenths of a millimeter, where you and I look at a three-millimeter mark, and you say, well, it's a three. I see the three-millimeter mark, and I say, wait, wait a minute. It's covering the three up. I actually call that a four. Mm -hmm. And you and I are off by a full millimeter, and you say, well, it's a millimeter. Who cares? And the dentist rolls in and says, wait a minute, guys. Three is healthy. Four is where we started treatment. Is it a four because of the patient, or is it a four because we're not all on the same page. We're not all, you know, rounding up or down consistently. Yes. So yes. part of it is about accuracy. Part of it is about consistency. So Florida Probe is a computerized probe that's run by a handpiece that's steam sterilizable or a one-time use disposable. And then you tap a foot switch and as you come around the mouth, one person can complete a full exam, including marking things like vacations and mobility and, and plaque and other indicators of disease. The voice works is the exact same software, but now you wear a wireless headset and you just talk the data in. So you use your manual probe 
and you would do the same thing, but now it's a one-person exam instead of a two-person. And then as you talk, the echo of the voice that you put in gets heard by the patient. You can choose to put it in your ear, but most people have it for the patient to play. And then as I zip around the mouth, the patient hears warning and danger based on different treatment levels, uh, warning or danger levels that I indicate. And so again, it's a little bit about what we call playing good cop, bad cop. Mm -hmm. I want the hygienist or the dentist always to be the healer and the educator. You're the good guy. And then somebody has to tell them the actual truth that you have a disease that can, for some people, lead to heart attack, stroke, diabetes, respiratory disease, you know, 100 horrible things that we're still learning about this inflammation model. And so yeah. a lot of offices don't know about the new voice work system. Um, this is very specially created to help improve some things that just haven't been good about voice activation in the past. And a lot of people, um, you know, with Florida Probe, it's basically a $6,000 expense for the first one. And if I need two, maybe that's a $10,000 expense. With the voice works, you could start for $1,000, and then there's a small monthly fee to give you kind of uh, unlimited software and training and support that every office needs as they grow. Yes. So $1,000 start up, you know, instead of a, a $6,000 kind of start. That's and, so. and, and Chris, what I love about what you're sharing is that one of the most common, you know, for one of the reasons why periodontal charting doesn't happen as often as it should, one of the complaints that I hear from hygienists is that I'm too busy or, you know, I can't do it by myself. And let's face it, especially if the patient has perio issues going on, it does become difficult to perio chart on your own. Like if it's, you know, four, six, it, it, the more advanced the perio, the harder it is to chart and to chart really accurately. Yeah. And so um, I just love VoiceWorks and Florida Probe, obviously both for that, because they make it so that a single hygienist can, can track and it's just done all through voice activation. Well, so through voice, yeah, actually, so voice works, and then it's actually, yeah. it, it actually happens through the probe itself with the Florida probe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. I think um, we don't talk about this too much, but, you know, how often should you be probing? And those mm -hmm. kind of questions come up. And it's fun for me to talk to offices all over the country and figure out what, what they're actually doing versus, you know, maybe what they're supposed to be doing. And, again, the, the purpose of this is just to do a little bit better than what we did before. Let's just do what you were doing before. But now watch how much more effective this is. Watch how much, how many more patients say yes earlier when you have more options. Um, you know, it's easy to add 100000 or $200,000 a year to the production of the hygiene department just by having really good records and a really good system and just doing the proper billing of, of what they're already finding. But before, nobody wanted a perio treatment because they didn't understand it, didn't hurt, there was no incentive. So yes, uh, you're totally right. Um, most of these offices that... Uh, know that they're supposed to do at least one perio chart a year, but that's for a healthy patient. Mm -hmm. A person that has a lot of disease, their mouth actually is going downhill faster. They even need more charting. So yeah. if they're in there four times a year, a lot of these offices really are doing four charts a year. That first chart, depending on how much data you're going to collect, is typically somewhere between about eight to 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then the second chart can be very fast because I'm just coming in and marking what's changed on the second visit especially if I just saw you a month ago, maybe that could be as, as fast as one to two minutes. Um, so that investment of that first exam is going to pay off on the second or third visit. Yeah. Um, and and I'm, I'm one of those hygienists that I, I agree with you, Chris. I actually, I like to probe every patient every time because there's so, I have, I have been in the place where I found a number of things that I wouldn't have ever found without probing. Um, you know, I had a patient that was totally healthy that um, I had a night, found a nine millimeter pocket on the lingual of number nine. And, you know, it turned yeah. out that he had, um, yeah, he had an abscess and he hadn't noticed it, you know, but it was just simply because of probing that I found it. Another time I found um, the same kind of thing on the distal lingual of tooth number 31, um, found suddenly, you know, everything was quite healthy and found this, I, I think it was like a, I, it was a very big pocket. It was like nine or something. And um, yeah. And at first I was like, what in the heck? And I was, I'm just going to call myself out. I was embarrassed because I'm like looking at the periodontal chart from last time. It was a three last time and now it's a nine. I'm like, oh no, did I miss it? And then I looked a little bit more. And again, on the distal lingual of 31, there was a fistula. And so that tooth also had an abscess. And the, this patient had been complaining about a toothache for seriously like eight months. And it had the pain had been referred. They they hadn't been able to found, find it, and it turned out it was actually tooth number thirty one. It had you know it had been going going up to the top. All this stuff they've been trying all these different things, and I would not have ever found that without um, without probing. So I just think there's so right. many reasons to probe, and this just helps 
with getting accurate and then also, you know, complete information and getting that each time. Yeah. And I totally understand where a lot of this comes from. There are a lot of offices do a lot of probing and a lot of education, and then the patients still don't do what we need yeah. them to do. And so it's not just doing the probing and charting. It's how you do it and using technology to do certain parts of it that we're going to go over here in a few seconds to, to really be powerful. I think a lot of this stems from the fact that in dental school or hygiene school, I keep bumping into a lot of students and I say, just for fun, tell me how much time do you guys in school get to do a perio chart? And the answer I get every time is one hour. And nobody coming out of dental school or hygiene school has an hour in the real life to get that whole chart done. I appreciate you want to do the chart perfect and, you know, we're in school and we're learning everything. In real life, when they get thrown into the the wood chipper of a really busy practice, you yeah. know, what happens is I'm lucky to get pocket depth numbers. Well, where's your bleeding? Where's your delayed bleeding? Where's your recession? Where's your frication? Where's your mobility? Mm -hmm. Well, we don't have time to do a good job. We don't have time to do that. Or I do it when I have my assistant in the room. Or I right. do it when, and so it becomes, you know, I totally understand how it happens. Um, but at the end of the day, if, you know, if the person has a lot of recession and you just have pocket up, you have no idea what the clinical right, and you're, and you're not giving them an accurate picture yeah. of their health and their periodontal condition. Absolutely, right, right. And so, yeah, I, I won't go into any of the fun lawsuit stories that are interesting <laughs> about periodontal disease and things, but I think that's always a, a motivator to look at things like this from a positive angle or negative angle. And I hope dental schools and I hope hygiene schools, especially, really start. Uh, let's figure out how to do a really good job in 12 minutes because if we don't prepare our students, mm -hmm. when they get thrown in the real world, things just get left out and then the patient is the one that loses in those scenarios. Okay, so here's this chart. Um, a lot of things are going on. A lot of what we're trying to do is just put any red on the chart is bad and we're looking for things, you know, comparing back to two or three different visits, looking for change arrows. We're tracking here at the bottom with these graphs whether or not there's a overall drop in the bleeding, the deep sites or the deep sites that are bleeding. If you are marking subgingival calculus or plaque, you can do a little brushing map for the patient. At the end of it, we like to set a diagnosis and that kind of puts you in a ballpark and then we'll make a treatment plan. Most important part is to have a patient sign it so that they acknowledge how important this is or if they say no, you have some legal uh, understanding that, you know, that you have been advised that this is pretty serious stuff. If the only thing that they sign at an office is a Visa MasterCard machine, it does start to imply money is important, and of course mm -hmm. that's not true. Uh, these other charts are about risk assessment, again, putting everybody in a low, medium, or high risk group, um, and understanding that your mouth is this gateway to the body's health, and you know, if the eye is a window to the soul, the mouth really is this gateway, and we're talking about inflammation, the ability to see it and chart it. So I think it's really important to tell patients, hey, the investment we're talking about, Paro, isn't just for your beautiful teeth. We really are talking about helping uh, your entire immune system. Your body can't be fighting this huge infection in your mouth and be healthy everywhere else. So it's a neat understanding of the body's total health and wellness. These are uh, another chart in there about patient education. So there's movies and things. When you get to show the before and after, you can see kind of the red decrease in oh, this particular that case is, where you yeah. see the bleeding drop, the, the deep sites that are dropping and the deep sites that are bleeding. So this isn't about that first chart that scares them into saying yes or shakes them up and then what do we do? This is really a disease for a lifetime. A lot of patients think about the toothache model. It's a one-time thing of, you know, and don't understand it's more like diabetes and it's a lifetime monitoring and, and so to, to to be able to watch it and clearly watch when it spikes back up and see, uh-oh, we got to pull you back into our three-month recare can be critical. Um, so yeah, let's jump into more about VoiceWorks. It's really one person probing and charting. Yeah, I want to see specifically. Yeah, it's designed specifically to work in noisy environments. We played around with Voice years ago as a company and couldn't get it to work um, for a dental office. It worked for drag and dictate when the doctor's off in his private room and he's dictating his notes to himself. Uh, but where it was horrible was to drag that same kind of idea out into a busy office, people that have accents, people that are talking really fast. Uh, the joke was always the fire engine would drive by and you chart half the mouth by mistake because, you know, background noise. So this is a new design for a headset that uses special artificial intelligence to know the difference between you talking to a patient and you talking to the headset. It has some really cool things in there about it's tuned specifically to work through a paper mask. Um, it adapts to any accent, and of course, it's going to link uh, to your practice management software. That's so cool. Yeah, that is very, very neat. So, um, okay, let's go, let's go ahead and go through the demo, and then I'll ask my questions. 
All right, so I just turned on Florida Probe software. You could link over from Adentric Soft and EagleSoft Practice Works. Some of these uh, links are doing more fancy stuff, uh, like passing over the missing teeth and those things. I'm going to start it as though it's a very simple link. So it would just pass over like your last name and your first name and your chart number. It's going to pass over male, female, and then the date of birth. And so I'm going to put in a fake date of birth. When you put in the birth date, it calculates your age and tracks your attachment loss based on your age. And that's mm -hmm. going to do a risk assessment for us automatically. That is really When cool. you start the periodontal exam, it kind of knows what you like to do at this particular uh, setup. So each operatory can do something a little different. Normally, the office are collecting all the same data. Um, the most important thing is to have your name. Everybody in the office that uses voice um, will have their own uh, voice file. So this voice is the, the only one in the world that I know of that has what we call dynamic learning. So a lot of voice systems, you train them, and then you hope you never sound different than on training day, which, <laughs> you know, you went to the Super Bowl, you come in, you got a hoarse voice or anything different, uh, those systems basically stop working. You have to go through a whole new training. So oh. these have, they automatically learn. You may have one headset in the office, but I have five operatories. So what happens when I got to move to the other room? Anytime you move your headset and your little wireless key, it moves your voice file with you. When I come back, it kind of keeps up with everybody. So with one headset, you can use this in any number of different operatories. And then, of course, uh, you can have an unlimited number of different users, even though they're sharing one or two headsets there. So I'm going to go ahead and put the headset on. Sounds great. And uh, get started. So typically, you put the headset on, you get your mask on, and then you kind of glove up last. Mm -hmm. When you get ready to go, you just say, start VoiceWorks. Remove third molars. One, two, three. One, two, three. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Two, two, two. Two, two, two. Normal. Three, two, three. Normal, normal. Three, two, three. Three, two, three. Healthy. Two, one, two. Two one three. Two midline. One three. Bleeding. Bleeding. Two one four. Two one four. Ah, so there's our first deep side. I was waiting for that to happen. So uh -huh. you, the office can set this anywhere they want. Usually on the first exam, we like to have a little bit of warning and danger noises. The warning and danger isn't just good news, bad news. In this office, scaling and root planning starts at four millimeters and deeper, and then they have a danger level where they may decide to do treatment one plus treatment two, and so we can play with that. It's kind of fun. Interproximal bleeding. Two one four. Two one four. Two one three. Two one three. Two one three. Two two two. Two two two. Two one four. Two one four. So by about the third one or so, I'll stop and tell the patient, aha, we were up to three. Now if we get up to twelve, we're gonna have to do two quads of SRP today. So I need you counting in and I get them on the team, mm -hmm. I get them listening in, and it's not if you need treatment, it's how much. And again, the computer's a salesman, I'm never the salesman, but I need them to know how important it is and they kind of, oh well, I guess I need to do this. Yep. Yeah. Two one four. Two one. Two one four. Recession one. One. Now, of course, guess what happens? I'm probed all the way over here, and now I need to jump back and mark some delayed bleeding. Jump to three. Half tooth bleeding. Jump to four. Suppuration. Two, one, three. Two, one, three. So if you notice, I can change what I had there before. Recession four. Recession four. Two, one, three. Two, one, three. Interproximal bleeding. Half tooth recession six. Six. Frication one. one. Mobility two. Mobility two. Jump to fifteen lingual. Normal. Three two three. Three two two. Three two two. Repeat four. Three two two. Three two two. Three two two. Three two two. Normal. Three two. Three. Healthy. Two, one, and you, two. I'm stopping and talking to you. I'm not doing anything special. It just yes. kind of knows the difference between me talking to you or me talking to the computer. And the thing um, that's so great is because you know you stopping and talking to me, it's just like a patient is going to say, "Oh, what is that?" You know, or yeah, what does all this bleeding mean? Right. Yeah. Now I can turn the headset off temporarily. Watch this. Stop voice works. And you didn't hear it, but in my ear, it's talking to me a little bit. This little window up top is like the person I drag in the room to help me chart. So now anything I say, I can go off and say bleeding and pus all I want and not worry about it going in. But I never want to touch the headset and have to click a mute button when I'm ready to get going again. 
Start oh, voice that's works. so great. Three, two, four. Three, two, four. Now listen to this. Three, two, seven. Three, two, danger, seven. Danger. Now, I don't know if I can save a seven millimeter pocket in this case, but we're going to do everything we can. Maybe we do our scalar root planning plus our Reston, or this is where we start mm -hmm. our perio trays, or this is where we use the laser. We have a lot of offices that are laser offices that are new to really focusing on perio where they're a general dentist office, but they're using the laser, and now they start, you know, they'll make a laser noise. So as they come around, ooh, you heard the laser noise six times, you're a perfect candidate for our laser treatment, or you're a perfect candidate for our one quad treatment. And again, they kind of tune it specifically. We have an office that does a Star Wars theme, you know, with the new Star Wars movie out, and they have R2-D2 beep at you at four, and they have Chewbacca yell at you at like seven when they just give up and send you to the periodontist. So, so okay, so Chris, be, I have to ask you this. Did they upload the, did they um, personalize or upload those, the Chewbacca and the R2-D2, or what do you have available? Yeah, so let me show you. I'm showing you on the screen. Let's change it just for fun. So here we are, and I click on the Options button, and I hit the Sound. And then I have all these languages. So really, if you notice, there's about 22 foreign languages. I can speak in English, and I can have a patient in the chair where English isn't their first language. So I know Spanish well enough to, to know what somebody else is saying, but I couldn't do it in Spanish for their benefit. So, you know, a lot of those offices in the United States, you know, have a 10% or 15% patient load where English necessarily wasn't their yep. uh, first language. So you can switch it into any language. You can just kind of make it more fun. The patient will sit up straighter in the chair if you do the British female, for example. It's more <laughs> prim and proper. Let's do it right now. I click the advanced button and, and it comes up with all the things. So right now I have a little warning noise. But if I don't like that noise, I want to say the word warning, I just click this button here. And now it says warning. And the same with danger. I've preloaded. You can just hit the browse button and download anything you want. So we have an wow. office that does Homer Simpson. And we have one that does the, uh, the different movie sound effects that are just kind of fun. So you just hit the browse button, go on the internet, and download any WAV file, and it instantly works. Now I'm going to do it right now. I have R2-D2 and Chewbacca. So let's switch it right now. 214. 214. 217. 214. So there's Chewbacca yelling at us. Now, if Chewbacca yells twice, we got to send you to the periodontist. So the patient will listen in as we zip around the mouth. View full page. View full page. So you can make it look at half. Remove lower arch. So just for fun, I kind of popped out all the lower teeth. You can mark implants, crowns, bridges, all of those kind of things. Two, one, three. Two, one, three. Crown. Whole tooth for cation three. three. Mobility one. Mobility one. Two one four. Two one four. Hyperplasia one. Hyperplasia one. And if you notice there, that red four millimeter pocket is now actually not red anymore because I have what they call pseudo pocketing or hyperplasia on that particular one. Mm -hmm. So it kind of knows how to do everything from plaque for cation mobility. And at the end, we just say end the exam. And you can't hear it, but in my ear, it's telling me that it's printing the chart, and it automatically went off and printed the chart. A lot of these times, we're printing back in as a digital copy to the practice management. So like Dentrix may get a digital copy that you attach for insurance, or Eaglesoft may get the digital copy. And again, there's the main chart, patient education handout, all these other charts, including kind of that customizable treatment form that we use as what we call an informed consent. Oh, that's so, awesome. So Chris, how, how many pages actually print out? If you're, or, or uh, in this case, to, to, yeah. or in this case just one printout, and uh, we saw some of those printouts earlier in kind of the slideshow. Uh, the main chart has everything, including kind of a summary of the last five or six charts. So really on one chart, you can have as many as six different visits total. It will compare back to the previous one or the first one, and then put an arrow indicator on the top of the chart to show um, how fast uh, uh, the disease is changing. Let's do it really quick. Let's pretend this guy comes back in in a month, and uh, we'll save this person. And then let's pretend that they come back in a month or six months, and we probe uh, this patient, Chris Gibbs, again. So normally I would come in from my linking software, and uh, here's that patient. It would automatically come over from Dentrix or SoftDent. And it would look like this. It would automatically kind of pop into mm -hmm. uh, this screen, which would give us a choice of creating a new visit completely from scratch, oh. or we have this option called carry data forward, and that will make a ghosted image of my old chart, and I'll get to rechart everything I want, or bounce over only to the items that change, 
and I can do one of those 30 second charts or something. Now this chart, of course, we only have half the mouth. Remember we popped out the lower arch, so this person doesn't have any teeth on the lower arch. So this one's a little faster, but for fun we'll show you this one. Carry data forward. Entering pocket depth. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. Three, three, three. Three, three, three. Two, one, two. Two, one, two. Jump to 11. Now I brought up the tooth history just for a second to look at this. Two, one, four. Two, one, four. Warning sounds off. Warning sounds off. Jump to 14. One, five, seven. One, five, seven, ten. Undo. So if you do make a mistake, that's kind of fun to know that you can just say the word undo or erase. Or if I wanted to put new data on top, you can. Um, so you can actually put numbers um, all the way up to 19. So I know it's unlikely to ever have a 14 or 15 millimeter pocket, but you can actually put numbers in that high. That is that is so cool. Okay, Chris, you're going to laugh when I ask this question. The black and red arrows at the top, the reason why I guess I'm a what, – what do the arrows mean? Great question. So if you get any up or down arrows that are black, it's a minor change of one millimeter. If you get a colorized arrow like red, it's worse by two millimeters or more. So if you notice there, 214 has a five and a seven, but those two are not only past my warning and danger level, but they're actually getting worse by more than two millimeters. So those are my hot spots. If I'm going to uh, you know, recommend a rest in or a treatment in a particular spot, it'll be anywhere those down red arrows would be. If you get any up green arrows, we didn't have any in this case, then, of course, that's two millimeters or more better. And usually you get a nice trend in one direction or the other. And it's really important when, that, when the dentist rolls in, you would say something like view summary. And it would pop up kind of a quick overview of, okay, our bleeding is holding, our deep sites are actually going up, and the deep sites that are bleeding are actually up. So there you can kind of see um, what's happening. So it's a quick overview. I might have five or six visits in that case. And I just need to know overall how we're we doing. And then regardless how we're doing overall site specifically, I look for those change errors. So right away I know where to focus the treatment and, of course, how to show that to the patient. And the oh, exam? That is so cool, Chris. I, so boom, I, we went off and saved our charts there, and we're kind of good to go and ready for our next patient. That is amazing. So, so yeah. amazing. Okay, so what do you see? Um, usually what's the catalyst of, uh, of a dentist um, using voice works at, or protoprobe in their office? Is it because they, they feel like their hygiene um, exams, their periodontal exams aren't accurate? Do they feel like what usually is the catalyst that gets people interested and gets them going, okay, I need this in my practice? Yeah, so it can be a lot of different things. A lot of times, uh, you know, with the economy doing a little bit better, um, it could just be that the office is busier. And a lot of offices have an assistant to help them every third or fourth chart. So that mm -hmm. assistant's now kind of answering the phone and doing a hundred other useful things. So it's that moment when they realize, hey, we're, we promised the hygienist the assistant or we had an assistant before and now uh, the schedule is starting to, to get so busy that they're having to do all the charts by themselves. And maybe that means they do a partial chart. Maybe that means yep. uh, we didn't have time to jump back and mark that delayed bleeding. Maybe it means I don't have, you know, 30 minutes to do a cleaning. Maybe I only have 20 minutes. So a lot of it is that spark that just says, wow, we're using technology for the, all these other things. Let's take a fresh look at something like VoiceWorks and come in and, and um, be more efficient. So a lot of offices come in from the efficiency side. How can I take a two-person thing down to one mm -hmm. and save that extra time? And so, yes, it will definitely pay for itself just by saving time. I think if a patient knows they have a problem, and a lot of offices get nervous, well, I've been seeing this patient for 10 years, and now today you're going to tell them they have all these problems. Of course, we can kind of blame, well, from what we now know from dental research and from this new exam experience, um, in a way we can blame the, the science, blame the uh, the new exam experience, blame the technology if you really want. We didn't know what we didn't know before kind of story. Um, and part of it was be, you know, a lot of times we have been watching it. There has been bleeding before. There has been that first four. There is that first five. And now today's the day that we finally have to do something. So yep. um, some of these offices are going to great um, 
speakers that um, really kind of are inspiring offices to, to do more with Perio and do more with technology. And so they've seen somebody. The cool thing about VoiceWorks is that we know how well it works. You get a three-month trial, so it's basically risk-free. Uh, headset is typically about uh, about a thousand dollars basically uh, per headset and sometimes you need one or two of those and then you get three months to really try it out and fall in love with it. Uh, there's a monthly fee that kind of allows us to keep the product new for life so it's seventy nine dollars a month gives you unlimited training, unlimited software upgrades, uh, unlimited live support and um, unlimited warranty so if the headset ever breaks we're just going to send you a brand new one and keep everything brand new for life. And what I just love about this piece is like, I, I know you're actually doing um, kind of a special thing with the listeners to the Future of Dentistry event, the listeners of the Future of Dentistry event, that it's $200 off. So like you said, it actually makes it, it, it takes it to just under $1,000. Is that correct? It takes it from to $995. Am I, is that correct? Or it takes it to... That's that totally way? correct. Yeah, the normal price is $1,195. And then with this special, uh, it is $995. And then you also get this three-month Try. I think the standard in dentistry is really to have one month trial and then you have to pay a 10% restocking fee. And so this kind of bucks that trend by saying, you know what, we want you to fall in love with this thing. We want you to show your before and after results so extreme that this thing pays for a year's worth of use, you know, just in your demo period. Uh, if it doesn't, we'll buy it back 100%. You won't even pay shipping. It's just kind of a, wow. a no-brainer when, when, you, when you see it from that side. I'll I'm telling you, I am in love with VoiceWorks and, and the Florida Probe. I, I think that they are both absolutely incredible. And, and you have, on, I can't think of something you guys haven't thought of. Like I love that you can start with a new chart or that you can bring the old data forward and have it in a ghost image. Or you can just, you know, bring up a past chart and make changes to it. The, it's, you guys really have thought of it all. And what you said is so true. It's, it, you've taken away all of the risk because VoiceWorks, first and foremost, is, is an incredibly affordable. And you think about it from the standpoint of just a few patients um, going through a periodontal treatment. And I, I feel like the chart itself does such an amazing job of, of explaining the treatment, you know, of putting it in a really nice visual context so patients understand what's going on, that um, just a few patients investing in that getting treated for periodontal disease and voice works is, has paid for itself. It's very cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you so much for the demo, and thank you for joining me. I, I, like I said, I, it's a, what, what you create is something that I completely support, and I just always enjoy the opportunity to get to talk to you, Chris. Well, thanks again for the opportunity, and um, we really appreciate it.